And diplomats from the world's most powerful countries are meeting in Austria's capital, Vienna, today for talks aimed at salvaging the Iran nuclear deal. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration wants to revive the accord, but has said that requires negotiations. Now, Iran is refusing direct talks, calling for sanctions to be lifted first. European nations will mediate between the two sides. A 2015 agreement to limit Iran's nuclear program collapsed after then-President Donald Trump withdrew and reinstated sanctions on the country. U.S. and Iranian officials laid out their aims ahead of today's talks. Our overarching goal is to ensure that Iran's nuclear program is permanently and verifiably constrained uh, and that on a permanent and verifiable basis, Iran will not be able to obtain a nuclear weapon. Whether the Joint Commission's agenda produces a result or not depends on the Europeans and reminding the U.S. of its obligations and the Americans acting on their commitments. And DW's Brussels correspondent Terry Schultz is with me now. Hi, Terry. Um, so as we just heard, uh, these are being described as indirect talks. Uh, can you tell us what that means and, and what is going to happen today? That's right, and this is because Iran refuses to sit down with the United States until the U.S. lifts the sanctions that President Trump reinstated on Iran, and the U.S. says it's not ready to do that yet. And so what's going to happen is that the other parties, Britain, France, Germany, China, and Russia, will hold talks with Iran, and then they will hold talks with the United States. It's unclear at this point, probably because the parties don't know themselves, whether there will be multiple rounds or even whether these talks may extend for more than just today. We just don't know at this point how it's going to go, but all the parties believe that simply getting all the, all the uh, negotiators in the same city, Vienna, is mm -hmm. a, a good step forward. Uh, Terry, is there a realistic prospect that both sides will simply sign up to that original treaty once again? Well, a technical point is that Iran never actually quit the deal. It's violating it uh, in some very significant ways, but it remains in the deal. It's the United States that quit, and that's a point that Tehran makes again and again. So the United States still has some of the same problems under, under President Biden that it had under President Trump. They don't go so far as to say it's the worst deal ever, as, as Trump did, but they do have some, some issues that you heard State Department spokesman Ned Price point out. One of those is that some of the aspects of the Iran nuclear deal are temporary and some of the restrictions will begin uh, expiring in as little as five years. That's something the U.S. would like to like to fix. But again, it's unclear whether they would push for that in these very early phases of getting back to the table. And talking about getting back to the table, let's just go back to those talks uh, in Vienna today. What would success look like at the end of today? Expectations are very low for any substantive breakthrough at this first round of talks, especially with the two sides not going face to face. But I think that if the talks ended with an agreement to simply have another round or if, uh, if you know, the, the United States and Iran thought there was enough room for compromise that they would hold face to face talks, that would be a huge success. But again, if both, both sides stay in Vienna and, and complete this round of talks, I think they will consider that a success. All right, that's Alteria Schultz in Brussels. She's going to be keeping an eye on those talks uh, in Vienna. Thank you, Terry.